church is going through a dark period. The church is under fire, it's under attack. The Catholic story is being told, but being told by the wrong people in the wrong way. We need to tell our own story. We need to get the message out so as to draw people in. Catholicism is smart, Catholicism is beautiful, Catholicism is colorful, it's textured, it engages the mind and the heart and the body. Christianity always has an explosive power. If we let it be itself, it always has this transformative power. How do you find joy? The sure sign that God is alive in you is joy. I've come that you might have life and have it to the full. That's what Jesus said. Catholicism at its heart is not a no, it's a yes. In fact, it's the story of the whole world. It's your story. Hi, welcome to the Catholic Corner. I'm Monsignor Walter Nolan. You're just watching part of the trailer of the Catholicism Project, a program created by Father Robert Barron. Father Barron is an acclaimed author, speaker, theologian, marvelous priest. Filmed in over 50 locations and in 50 different countries, the Catholicism Project is a thematic presentation of what Catholics believe and why and live and love. It's designed to give all a deeper understanding of our Catholic faith. This 10-episode series will be aired on the Eternal Word television network and in some parts of the country on PBS. We're so blessed and so fortunate that locally, the series will be presented as an evening program, which will include time for adult conversation, light refreshments, and the wonderful, beautiful church of St. Anne in Lawrenceville. The program is free and open to everybody. This presentation of the Catholicism Project at St. Anne's is a part of the ongoing faith formation program. And my guests today are going to share with us about this exciting and unique program and what the fruits they hope the series will bear in the parish. Monsignor Vince Garland is the pastor of the Church of St. Anne's and a dear, dear friend and another beautiful, beautiful priest. And also with us is Gary Macaroni, the pastoral associate at St. Anne's. And as a young man, I knew him in high school. He was always a great young man. He's a great, beautiful father, friend, and also a pretty good athlete in his day, and maybe even now. <laughs> Monsignor Vince, Gary, wonderful to, wonderful to have you both. Welcome and, uh, to our Catholic Corner. Thank you. Good to be here. Oh, great. Monsignor and Gary, tell me, what, what attracted you? I know your, your parish well, and you're much into faith formation and the beauty of life, and you, and you live it so well down there. But what attracted you to this Catholicism project? How do you hope it's going to enrich not only your parish, but I think anyone who comes? Yeah, I think I, I, I've, as I, I, basically I was at the North American College and Father Barron was there. So he taught a couple of the courses in the program. And I got really captured by his enthusiasm for spreading the faith in, in a new and different way. And it was shortly after that that he began to work on this project uh, of really trying to tell the story of the church from, from our point of view. I think that we, uh, you know, we get tired of hearing the negative aspects of the church. Church is closing, schools closing, uh, the uh, priest abuse, the, all kinds of other problems in the church. And we focus on the problem, but we really need to step out of that. We've got the best, the greatest story ever told, and we need to tell it. And I think that 
uh, as I began to view this and see that he's really got something wonderful here that really needs to be shared. You know? And you know, Monsignor, I, I feel the same way because so often do I think back in our history, you know, I mean, uh, you know, the, the universities that came out of our, about our lived faith, the, the hospitals, I mean, so much comes out of our lived faith and so much still happens that, that sometimes people just say, oh, well, we know this story, but we don't know the rest of the story and, and the love of it. Gary, how about yourself? You know, you're a wonderful young man, you know, oh, beautiful you. family, and I still remember you with that stick in your hand. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, well, when, when my senior Vince brought it to the attention of the parish, uh, so I, one of the things I do is coordinate adult faith formation. I started to think, wow, this, this has great potential for catechesis and using this in adult faith formation. So we began to sit down uh, as a pastoral team and, and began, to, began to look at it. And it really, uh, the more and more we looked closer at it, we thought this would be something that we could build on. Uh, looking at what we're trying to do in our parish, we do have this wonderful story. And in a parish, we're trying to embody that story to live it out and to invite others in. So how can we use this as part of our catechetical efforts to put it in sort of a pro programmatic sort of way? Uh, and that's what we started to do. We started to brainstorm a little bit and that's what we've been working on. Um, and we're here today and we're gonna premiere the first episode this evening at St. Anne's. Oh wow, it's really starting to roll for you. Oh yeah. How about describing the program? We did we did see the trailer and it's, it is exciting. How about describing a little more detail? Uh, it is a television series as well. Um, how about tell me more about this? It's a, I would say it's certainly packaged as a, an adult faith formation program. It is made for television and that's gonna be exciting as well. Uh, it's made, the idea being to support and enhance the church's mission of evangelization and teaching the content of Catholic faith. And what he does in a very unique way is he brings together all the treasures of Catholicism, the art and the architecture, uh, the unique theologies, and he uses the social media to do that. And he packages it all together. Which is the media of today, isn't it? That's the That's language that people are speaking today. That's right, seeing... I mean, people, anyone under 40 is really into, into the social media, into that language. And, and then in the midst of that, he's able to, to kind of bring some of the truths of our faith to explain them and bring them to light. And uh, I think that's the, it's a captivating sort of thing. And it's something I haven't seen anything like it before. I mean, I've seen a lot of very good uh, catechetical programs and, and uh, films and things of that sort. But this seems to, to pull together uh, just the real richness uh, and truth and beauty in the church. And, he uses the uh, saints and uh, quotes uh, you know, from the fathers of the church and all kinds of things, uh, but in a very real way that I think really has an impact, certainly. And it, it seems today, too, when you, when you do it uh, either on television or through the media, so much can happen. I mean, your eyes are seeing something, your ears are hearing something, somebody's speaking something, and you, and you get engaged yourself into the dialogue. And he's gone all over the world in, in kind of finding these treasures and kind of bringing them to light. And I think that's, that's what I mean, we have to step out of the darkness that we have, you know, and we can't deny it, it's there. But, but the more important thing is we have such beauty, such so many things that give light and life to people. And we're neglecting those if we don't keep pushing them forward. Gary, and I also believe that when, you know, when, when something touches you, you want more. You know, like if you say, you, like, you, you go around the world and you see a, an, an image of something, you almost want to go there yourself or you want to see what those people are doing. Or if, or if there's joy in their face, why is the joy in our faces? Yeah, and that's why we're trying to get as much exposure to this as possible. One of the ways that we're trying to put it into our parish catechetical program, we have an adult faith formation program that we do sometimes in the evening and sometimes in the afternoon. We're also going to use this as part of our Generations of Faith program, which is an alternative to the traditional model of religious education. So we have about 160 adults who come through that program and they're gonna get some exposure to this. And then we're gonna use it for RCIA, adult confirmation. Uh, we're still brainstorming other ways that we can get as much exposure to this as possible, as sort of a common theme in the parish, strengthening Catholic identity. And hopefully we can hear some preaching on it and uh, weave it into uh, just to most of our catechetical efforts uh, as part of our uh, celebrating our 75th anniversary year. 
And when so. you said, hopefully you get some of the preaching, you have one of the best preachers that I know <laughs> right here sitting with us. So you're, you're, you're all at home with, with what you're doing. What are some of the topics? I, there, I think there are 10 series. Or, what are some of the topics that you'll be sharing? Well, it begins with the focus on Jesus. Uh, God's, God breaks into the world in Jesus, and that's where he starts. Then he goes into the teachings of Jesus. And then he goes into the person and nature of God, uh, the perennial problem of evil, why do bad things happen to good people. And then he develops Mary, the, the essential things in the church, Mary, Peter and Paul uh, as essential to, to the mission work of the church, talks about the church, its sacramental life, prayer, uh, and then last things. So he's so got it laid out nicely. Topics. You know what I would like to do, if it's okay, Monsignor and Gary, I'd, I'd like to show a little more segment of, of the tape so that people can really get a feel for it sure. and then we'll discuss it some Great. more, okay? comes from the Greek word apostelling. It means to send. Jesus took these 12 people whom he had formed after his own heart and then he sent them. The Christian faith is never meant to be held onto as a private privilege. It's meant to be shared, to be spread like seed around the world. And so the apostolic church to the present day still has that great missionary purpose. The God that Jesus consistently proclaimed is a God of tender mercy, a God of gracious love, whose very nature is to give. When I find my deepest center, that place in me where I am here and now being created by God, I've also necessarily found the deepest center of everyone else and everything else in the cosmos. In the 2nd, 1979, John Paul II said Mass here in Victory Square. He preached and he spoke of God, of freedom, of human rights. The crowd began to chant, We want God. We want God. One of Paul's favorite words is dunamis in the Greek, which means power. Dynamite comes from that. And the gospel he keeps saying is dunamis. And so he, what he was doing, he was walking around this part of the world with dynamite. That's what he was doing. And the dynamite was that God is love and that God has manifested himself in Jesus Christ risen from the dead. And it's dynamite that will turn the world upside down.
peculiar thing about Christianity, the gospel hinges upon it. Jesus consistently speaks and acts in the very person of God. One day in a hovel in the little nothing town of Nazareth, an angel appeared to a young Israelite girl, perhaps no more than 14 or 15, and they had an extraordinary conversation. Our Lady of Guadalupe became the bearer to this nation, to this people, of the God who orders things not through violence, not through scapegoating, but precisely through love. In the first weeks and months of her new life, Mother Teresa experienced bouts of discouragement and loneliness. But she persevered, and so many of Mother Teresa's former students came to join her here in the slums of Calcutta. Teresa of Avila found at the very depth of her soul Christ dwelling in her and she found that to be a castle. To be grounded in Christ, she realized, was to be grounded in that very power which here and now creates the cosmos, that power which lies beyond the vagaries of space and time. Itself, God cannot be grasped, but at the same time, being itself cannot be hidden from. God insinuates himself into every nook and cranny of what he's made. The church father Tertullian said, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of Christians. Is that true in this case? You tell me. soul seek a definitive truth, a final good, an absolute beauty. The soul pushes beyond itself toward these transcendent ends. I think you can see why we're so excited about the project. It, it, really, it really pulls out the positive and the beauty of the church. It's just a great, uh, great thing to get excited about. You know.
Why do you feel it's such a, a, a different way of teaching the Catholic faith? I know you, you can sense it in yourself. I think Gary? part of it is, uh, certainly it's great use of social media and it brings together, uh, again, it's, it's visual, it appeals to different, I think it'll appeal to different people at different levels and, and different interests. Yeah, so in that sense, it, it, it's wonderfully done. Um, so that's our hope. It seems that it would go across, you know, even age levels. Right, every age, every culture, every, there's, and, and that's what Catholicism is. Sure. And I think that's what it really shows us, that, that this is a, that God is invested in all of hum, humankind and, and all cultures and all peoples. Now, have you done any background research? I mean, has this been shown before? You, you, is your parish the only parish in the diocese now? Or, or tell me about all that. I think a Precious Blood down on the, uh, in the Jersey Shore there, Monmouth Beach is, mm. is doing a program. I think they're doing it weekly. Uh, and I'm sure that if you called, you'd get the information of when they're doing that. But uh, we did do, on the Feast of the Assumption, following Mass, we had a, a preview. And we had about 150 people from many different churches come. And there was a real strong, positive response to that. So hopefully that will uh, get us going here. So you have done a little background work. Well, and and you, 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 now how, how will this relate from your parish? I think it's going to be shown on TV, the same program? Yeah. Uh, can people watch it on TV and, and still come to your discussion groups? How is that going to work? We, we, I think that you can see this as many times as you, you and it's always going to do something for you. And I think Gary had a great idea. We're going to try it this Sunday. Is just after the 930 mass, we're just going to put it in a room, turn it on. People can come in and go out as they please. Uh, that's another, if you catch just a little bit of this, you've got something uh, to build up your pride. So that's I, was, I was just thinking, I don't know why my head goes into donuts, but maybe, maybe but you know, when you have like coffee and donuts at times, yeah. if they, yeah. you, know, you have that plan, well, just, you know, you take a bite of a donut, you want another one? Yeah. You get a little bit of this, you know, you say, well, gee, well, when can I see the rest of it? Or, you know, that's, that's marvelous ideas. That's it. And you marvelous can, ideas. Yeah. Tell me, um, what's the one thing that, that attracted you to make sure you want to do this in St. Anne's? I know you have a beautiful faith formation program, and I know you both so well. Well, we're celebrating our 75th anniversary ah. beginning, and uh, we wanted to make sure that a part of it that had to do with, with Catholicism, we got a lot of great parties and ideas and all that, but, but we want to uh, pass on the faith. That's part of our mission. The other thing is that, that we have a goal. We set a bold goal for a 75th anniversary. We want to increase Sunday Mass attendance by 750 people by next year. Okay, so everybody's got to go out and bring someone in. And this is a great evangelization tool. It kind of gives you a sense of pride of why you'd want to bring someone to this, this wonderful, wonderful religion. I was thinking when you said that, Monsignor, uh, do you have room? I mean, I know you're so successful already, but that's okay. That's all right. They can always let we'll them squeeze in. It's you know, a... we used to say in business, you can have a, you know, a, a wall stretcher. That's right. You know, which is a wonderful, wonderful thing. The, um, so you've had a lot of response, feedback from people that have been touching it. What have, been, what have they been saying to you? What are they, what are they talking about? Well, I, I think people who, uh, people are excited that something's kind of, I think people, as, as Monsignor Vince alluded to, want to hear something positive and wonderful about their faith. They have a sense of that, but they don't know how to articulate that. And I think when they see this or they hear someone talk about it, it does that. And that's, that offers a sense of renewal, a sense of excitement. Um, and, and that's what we're trying to do with the whole program. I, I see this as part of renewal, ongoing renewal, w one aspect of that. You know, when, when we're talking like this, uh, it, it almost reminds me of uh, a long time ago when I got involved in a little bit of, of clown theology. And the notion of the, of, of, the, of the silentness of the clown is to take someone who is sacred and profane a little bit, but they go out more sacred. I think that's the liturgy of the church. That's the excitement of our faith that we do come in and, and at times we do say, well, Lord, we're not perfect, but we do come with that excitement of, of saying, gosh, the, the gospel, the message, the, the joy, that, and we walk out hopefully feeling really, really moved by all of that. Do you think we need more programs like this? Oh, sure. I mean, I think, I think and, and not only programs, we need to set people on fire with this kind of enthusiasm. You can kind of catch his enthusiasm and, uh, and to go out and to kind of spread that word. We've got, as I say, the greatest message uh, that, that God chose to, to become flesh, become human. You know, I love Monsignor, the word enthusiasm. The Greek is entheos, you know, the God within comes exploding out. And that's the enthusiasm of the entheos, the enthusiasm of it all. So if somebody wants to be uh, is interested in uh, 
St. Anne's or, or the project? Uh, how do they uh, participate or what can they do for it? They could just show up. Uh, and when they come, they'll get a folder, they get a schedule, we'll give them some resources. They can certainly call the parish, they can ask for me. I'd be more than happy to even connect them, uh, not only to, to come to our place, but if they wanted to offer something in their own parishes, we have a connection of, from Ascension Press, who, who's publishing the, the resources, and, and they're excited too about it. So they're, they would be happy uh, for anyone to take hold of this and, and make it present in their own way, in their own parish, perhaps. But like you said, Monsignor, the more, the more times you see it or the more times you do something, the more times it all gets so, so exciting and, and we're all caught up in that, uh, that blessedness. And Father Barron, you said you studied with him, under him, and you know yes, him as a friend? I, I know him. We had dinner together a lot and all that, but uh, at the North American College, he was, uh, he was there as a scholar in residence when, when we were there. So. so you're really pleased and you're really blessed to have a person like him that was in your life and still in your life and still a blessing and still things to, uh, to appreciate and to go on. You know, it's, it's amazing. And I hope this does spread to other parishes and I hope it throughout the whole diocese and maybe, maybe this oh. is a, a flame that, uh, that does, uh, you know, enkindle everybody and is really a, a blessing and a really a, 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 great, uh, a great gift to, to all of us. Are there other programs that are like it, different? I mean, what else is on your mind in your faith formation program? I haven't seen programs like this. And, and in fact, this year, we're making this the adult faith formation program. In the past, we offer a variety of things. We're trying to channel all our energies on this, again, to try to uh, generate enthusiasm and get as much exposure to it as possible. And we want to saturate the parish with this, this kind of uh, idea that the, the church has got so much positive stuff to give, and that's where we need to put our focus, you know. So, so you'll be doing many things to allow this to take root, to allow this to be part of people's lives. Monsignor and Gary, I know you're both well. You're two marvelous men in the church and, uh, and, and just good men. And keep up the good work, and I'm, I'm pleased to be part of your friendship. God bless you. The Catholic Corner. Please, if you're interested, Gary Macaroni, 609-882-6491. He's at extension 116. Be enthused. Let the God within burst out. Join your parishes, join your families, join the folks at St. Anne's and the great work that they do. Bless you, smile, and know you're much, much loved by a God. You're much, much loved by a church who loves you very, very much. <laughs>